friends welcome back to arc tutorials this is express js top 50 interview questions and answers with code snippets i'm sure if you follow these two parts of i'm bringing the series in two parts if you follow these two parts along with the code snippets that i've given i can guarantee you that you will be able to crack any interview based on express js with that being said let's get started but before I go any further, I must explain you that these are the top 50 questions that you should know if you are preparing for ExpressJS. These 50 questions covers all the features and aspects of ExpressJS. I have included detailed code explanations and code snippets wherever required to give you a feel of what you should explain when you are answering those interview questions. The best part. I am making this entire PDF available for you for free. You can download it from our, from Gumroad my account which is arctutorials.gumroad.com. Make sure that you get this free PDF copy and also please do share it with your friends and colleagues who wants to learn and master ExpressJS. With that being said, let's start with the first question. Alright, so the first and the most foremost question that is asked is what is ExpressJS and why is it used? ExpressJS is a fast and minimalistic web application framework for Node.js. It is used to build web applications and APIs to provide a robust set of features, simplifying the development process. You can also talk about that ExpressJS uses heavily middleware, which is one of the most powerful way to customize the function request and responses. You can also talk about the different templating engines that are available like a pug, EJS, etc. How do you install ExpressJS in Node.js project? You can install ExpressJS via using npm which is Node Package Manager by running the command npm install express. What are some of the key features of ExpressJS? ExpressJS provides excellent set of features, some of which are routing, middleware, templating engines, error handling, extensibility, a lot of it plays well with a lot of other modules. These are some of the things that you should definitely talk about when you are talking about the features of ExpressJS. How does ExpressJS handle routing? ExpressJS has a powerful inbuilt routing mechanism which will help us to handle different types of HTTP methods like GET, POST, PUT, DELETE, etc. Routes are defined using the app.get, app.post. Alternatively, Express comes with router. You can also use router and you can say router.post, router.get, etc. So there are two ways of how you can handle it. What is middleware in ExpressJS? <coughs> middleware functions are functions that have access to the request and response objects in ExpressJS. They can perform tasks such as logging, data parsing, authentication, and error handling. Middleware functions can be registered using app.use. You can also specify certain routes if you want for a certain uh, model that you are building. You can use app dot u slash api for a particular contact that way you can customize so middleware is one of the most powerful thing in expressjs there are other things like next other things which are also equally important but middleware is one of the core fundamental concept of expressjs <coughs> how can you handle form data in expressjs so now there are different ways of how you can get it when you submit a form you usually get it through request body, right? So either you can use a middleware using a, a module called body-parser. Using that, you can say body parser dot JSON, and you can say body parser dot URL encoded, extended false or true, and you can get that data. Alternatively, when you are doing with router, you do not need body parser. So there are different ways of how you can handle data, but these are the two primary ways that you can use. One is using body-parser module. The other is using directly the router. How can you handle and serve static files in ExpressJS? So 
we can always mention, uh, like I said, Express provides us a built-in middleware called Express.static. Okay, so what it does is that let's say you have a set of files which are in your folder. In this case, let's say the static files are in the folder public. So you can do a middleware and say app.use express.static. That means serve the static files from public directory. Right? So that's how you can serve any static uh, files like say images, CSS, uh, scripts, etc. <coughs> So important thing that you should tell the interviewer is express.static. That's the thing that he wants to hear when he is asking about how do you handle the static files. What is the purpose of next function in Express.js middleware? This is one of the most core, um, I would say, uh, functionality that you should have understanding about. The next function is used in middleware to pass control to the next middleware function in the stack. It is typically called at the end of a middleware function to hand off the request and response objects to the next middleware in line. Now let's say you have a sequence of middlewares that you have, right? Now this is one classic example. I have a simple uh, function, right, which is request, response and next and you'll do perform some logic in this particular method. Once you do that, you will then say next. That means once you have executed this particular middleware, it will then the call pass will be to the next handler. OK, so essentially what you're saying here is that whenever you have multiple middleware uh, methods that you have stacked up sequentially from one method to another, it's like chaining Okay, automatically calling the next middleware function. We use next method. Okay. Very, very important. Make sure that you um, go through that because here if you see I'm calling users middleware, right? So it will call this method and pass the control back or to the router handler, right? So you can sequence the events that you want to chain. That's what next function is used for. How can you handle route parameters in Express.js? Now, anything that's incoming right let's say a data that's coming through a form through a params through a query everything is part of the request right so how do you handle it you can use request.params.id so you're trying to get the id from the url you can see here slash users slash colon id that means here id is dynamic and it's a param that we are passing by the name id Hence, here we are collecting it by the saying request.params.id. If you change the ID to something else, you need to change it here as well. So give this example when you talk about the how do you handle the route parameters. How can you implement authentication in Express.js? Yes. Now, this is a common, <clears throat> this is a generic one. It's not very specific to certain things, but they want to know your understanding about the authentication so the way you should talk about is that you should talk about the various strategies that are involved while building a solid authentication system some of the common strategies are json based web tokens right jwt's that's one of the com most common things you have session based authentication with cookies you have uh, integrations with third parties like um, oauth etc which uh, gives you a multi-factor authentication, right? Uh, sending an SMS uh, to your mobile device or a registered email, and then you come back. So there can be different authentication strategies, and it will it usually varies from different organizations, but these are high-level strategies that you should be aware of. Explain the concept of middleware chaining in Express.js. Yes. Now I talked about this in the previous um, two last two uh, questions where we covered next. So middleware chaining is in Express.js involves registering multiple middleware functions in a specific order using app.use. So each middleware function is executed in sequence and subsequent middleware functions can modify the request and response objects before passing the control to the next middleware in the chain. So let's say when you have five uh, code that you have written which says app.use, 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 so you are registering essentially five middleware. Now the, it will go sequentially, one, two, three, four, and five. In the first middleware, you process and you modify the request and response and you call the next method. 
it goes to the next middleware where the request and response has been modified. That concept in ExpressJS is called as middleware chaining. When you work in a serious uh, enterprise complex applications, you will come across this a lot, a lot. It's used very, very heavily, especially to clean up the data, to process, to uh, transform the data, and then actually do the operations, right? So that's where the things will be. How can you handle errors in ExpressJS? Express provides error handling middleware functions that can be defined with four parameters. Error, request, response, and next. We can throw error and catch them in a try-catch exception. You can, these, you can use these middleware functions to handle and process errors. Okay. Alternatively, when you are building your request and response, you can also add try-catch inside that blocks and handle it. What are route handlers in ExpressJS? Route handlers are the functions that are responsible for handling requests to specific routes. They are defined as callbacks to HTTP method specific route functions. Now in this case, if you see, this is a route handler for app.get slash, right? So it will always have a request response. It can also have error and next function. But I, in this case, we have a request and response. So similarly, if for users, we have a request and response, and that is what will be a function which will be responsible for collecting or manipulating the request and sending the response. How can you access request query parameters in ExpressJS? Like I said, any data that is incoming to you via either a form or a param or a query param, it will be part of the request, right? So request params can be accessed using, in this case, request dot query dot q. Q is nothing but the parameter that was passed in the URL. Okay. So how do you collect it? You query it directly in the request object, which has request dot query dot the search term, whatever you have passed. Okay. So that's how you can collect the data. How can you send JSON responses in ExpressJS? So when you want to send a JSON response in ExpressJS, you will use response.json along with the status code, right? You can say res re response in this case, dot status, whatever status, 200, 500, 400, dot JSON, and you build the JSON object and send it back. Okay, so it has to be included as part of the response object. How can you handle file uploads in ExpressJS? We can handle file uploads in ExpressJS using middleware such as uh, Multer or Formidable. Okay. Now these are uh, these middleware functions will handle multi-form data request. Okay. In the past, I have used Multer, and that's an excellent library uh, which supports uh, uploading of files easily and can be easily customized like upload dot single, upload dot multiple, the file name and then followed by the request and response, etc. However, there are some specific options and configurations that you need to do in terms of where the file should be stored, how it should be stored, etc. But if, if the interviewer asks you how do you handle, the f handle file uploads, you can mention, give an example of Multer and talk about this code that I gave you, which is to include, create an instance of Multer and say upload.single, the file name that you want to store. Explain the difference between app.get and app.use in ExpressJS. This is one of the most classic and commonly asked question. <coughs> app.get is a route specific method in Express. That means route specific means we are implementing a HTTP method by the name get and that's where you're writing that particular method. Whereas app.use is more of a general purpose method used for registering middleware functions okay that will be executed for every request regardless of the http method or path so these are app.use is a middleware function which will be executed irrespective of the http method app.get app.post put delete these are all very specific to a route specific methods how can you set response headers in ExpressJS? 
Now you can set response headers in ExpressJS using the rest.set method. Now here you are doing the set header. You see here response.set header. It will set the headers before you send the response. But remember you cannot set the headers after you have sent the response. So you need to do that before you do the dot send method. <coughs> what is the purpose of app.locals object in ExpressJS? The app.locals object in ExpressJS is an object that provides a way to pass data from the server to views or template. Now let's say you're building a full-fledged server uh, at the app app which has the templates also at the express side you can use app.locals.title so now this can be used by your templating engines to read those variables and display the data so the other way of asking this question is how do you bind the data between express methods and your templates you can say we use app.locals to set the data how can you implement session management in ExpressJS. So session management can be implemented using various different modules that are available. There is no inbuilt as such but there are other solutions like express-session which helps us in creation, storing, manipulation of the spe session specific data. Okay. So talk about uh, express-session and talk about how you have used them on give this example that I have shared with you. How can you handle the cross-origin resource sharing in ExpressJS? So course can be handled in ExpressJS using middleware such as course module. Okay, This middleware adds appropriate headers to the responses allowing cross-origin requests from specified domains. Okay, So we use the course app, we register it and say enable the in the middleware, we say app.use and we just call course so that way the course will be enabled there are certain configurations we can do in terms of what domain, what IP, etc. What is the concept of route prefixing in ExpressJS? So, <coughs> route prefixing in ExpressJS involves grouping related routes under a common prefix. Right? Now, again, this is part of a middleware. You can just append a common route right, in front of any particular, uh, this, let's say this is express.router and here now everything will start with slash api slash users okay because we are saying app.use slash api api router so this is called route prefixing you are appending certain um, route and that's where uh, it will be added to the route handler how can you limit rate how can you implement rate limiting in expressjs now rate limiting can be implemented in expressjs using various middleware like express rate limit now this is very very important from security perspective because it will restrict the number of requests from a particular ip address or a user so that you don't hackers don't attack or you don't have a ddos situation so you can talk about express rate limiter and configure the rate limits that you want to set how many max should be there what's the message that should be displayed and how many should be per window time how many requests are allowed in a time frame etc what is the purpose of view engines in expressjs view engines in expressjs allows for dynamic generation of html or other type of markup they are rendering templates injecting data into them dynamically and sending the response to the client so view engines is nothing but the template engines right that you are dis using to display the data that's dynamically binded and send the response in entirety so we talked about how do you handle authentication middleware in ExpressJS. We use app.use, which is a global, um, you know, which will be executed for all the HTTP methods and which should be verifying uh, your session or a credential and then only allowing the further interactivity, right? So we need to implement any authentication me mechanism, let's say JWT or multi-factor to, to multi-factor authentication but it should be used as part of app.use as a middleware and then you should start continuing executing the program all right so we'll stop here for this episode i hope you're learning i hope you're enjoying i hope you crack that interview don't forget to get your free copy of this ebook e as a pdf at arttutorials.gumroad.com We'll continue this series in the next episode. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you 
the next episode. Thank you.